Have we gone live? Yes, we're streaming live. Sorry, we're just a little bit late today. It's my fault. Technology here in Australia has been quite slow. But let's get on with the show because I've got a special guest coming in, uh, another fan coming on. We've had a couple and it's been brilliant so far. So uh, Nahal, that's who we've got coming on. Hopefully he stands up. But we're going to be talking about Rohit Sharma's captaincy. Boomer are not playing the next test match. And Benny Stokes, should he bowl or not? And a few other things coming your way live on Hogs Hog Out. Well, I just want to start with uh, quickly with Australia versus New Zealand in the T20 game. I can't uh, not go on without having a little jibe out the New Zealanders. Should have beaten Australia. Dropping Marsh so early on in his innings was very costly. And Tim David out the back end firing away. The Mumbai Indians over there in the IPL will be hoping he keeps that form up as well. So Australia... Annihilating New Zealand, chasing down 215. What an exceptional performance. But firstly, we're going to get on live here right now and we're going to be talking about Rohit Sharma's captaincy. I really love the way that Rohit Sharma is captaining his team against England. England have come out and trying to play a little bit of baseball. We've got something coming up in a minute. If we can get that up okay, a little bit of a statement that Rohit Sharma said earlier on, and um, I just like the way that he's backing his bowlers. Yes, England are going hard at our bowlers and putting us under pressure, but you can go to plan B, you can go to plan C, you can go to plan D, whatever, but you've actually got to back your bowlers, show character, and set the fields that's going to give the best opportunity for your bowlers to get the wicket. Yes, you want to try and prevent the boundaries, but the way that England are going after the bowling, they're going to present opportunities for you and you've got to make sure you take them. So your mindset still having catches around the bat, but also having plenty of defence. And when you've got that defence, England don't want to change their gears. They don't want to push the ones and try and get Rowett to show, uh, change the field or any other captain for that matter. They continually try and find those boundaries. So that plays into the fielding captain's uh, plans as well. So the bowlers don't really have to change too much. So it's great that Rowett is backing his bowlers and getting the job done. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, Boomerer. Not playing in the next test match. Now, this is going to play in the hands of England, obviously. Uh, Boomer are just getting a little bit of reverse swing and probably the best fast bowler in this test series, um, especially when it's reverse swinging. You know, that's going to cause some problems for India going into the next test match, and it's going to uh, really put a little bit of extra pressure on Siraj, which I think, after the way I saw him bowl in the second test match, uh, third test match just recently, is up to the task. I reckon Siraj is just starting to turn the corner, and he is becoming a leading bowler, a frontline bowler for India right now, and he's going to really compliment Boomerah and Shami in all three formats moving forward. So Boomer is being rested for the fourth test. Now, you might sit there as fans out there and go, why are they resting him? You've got to make sure you monitor his workloads because playing three different formats, and I've always harped on about this, as a fast bowler, it is, it is the, mo the hardest thing in cricket. And it's putting a lot of pressure on his body. So you've got to make sure he's right for the World Cups that are coming up around the corner. And Mumbai Indians have got to make sure that he's right for this year's IPL as well because the Mumbai Indians are missing him. Uh, they're not going to do well either. So it, it, there's a little bit of balance there. Let's go on to the next one. England complaining about the DRSs. And it's Crawley again. Crawley getting LBW, umpire's core. Well, We've already heard from the technicians about DRS that they've slightly it's, it's slightly not accurate. There is a small margin of error there, and that's why we've got umpire's call in it. 
Now, the umpires out, out in the middle are doing a fantastic job. They give the decision. Umpires calls there. Look, I've been harping on actually about umpires call. It should either be out or not. But for me, you go back to the benefit of the doubt to the batsman or the benefit of the doubt to the umpire here. And uh, the more I think about it, the more I actually prefer umpire's core to be in there knowing that technology is slightly wrong. And plus, the umpires sometimes get it wrong as well. They misjudge it, and they're only human. So we're just seeing that the technology is only human, and it's the same for both sides. So unfortunately for England... Yes, it might cost you out certain stages of the game, but on the flip side, it's going to cost the opposition team out some stages throughout the series as well. So pull your horns in, keep your mouth shut, and stop whinging about the DRS because it's the same for both sides. And we can look at it down the track. And the other thing for England, Ben Stokes bowling. (whistles) Benny Stokes bowling. This could be a good thing for England, but they don't want to push it too hard because if he damages his knee and you've got the T20 tournaments uh, or T20 World Cup coming up around the corner and he's not available for that as your premium all-rounder, it's going to be costly in that particular series. But I like the way that Brendan McCallum has come out and said if the medical staff say that he is right to bowl, he will be bowling but we won't be forcing it upon him. If the medical staff don't think he's right, well, Ben Stokes won't be bowling. So the coaches and the medical staff are taking control here of the player, and sometimes the medical staff have to step in and say, Ben, this is not the best for you. It's not best for English cricket moving forward. You can't bowl. But... In other circumstances and uh, throughout my career, there's been times where bowlers have said, look, I feel as though I can get through this test match. I can feel as though I get through this one-day game. I am actually going to play. You're not going to stop me. I think my body's right. I'm feeling that my body's right. And sometimes you have to um, not take the doctor's advice and just go out there and play and trust your body because um, the medical staff don't really know your body. But when it comes to a knee like Ben Stokes and he's been up and down with that particular knee, it's cost him a few games. Sometimes the medical staff have to override him. And well done to Brennan McCallum there for standing up. Yes, Brennan McCallum's aggressive with his coaching style and wants the players to go out there and push the boundaries. But he's gonna not going to let his trump card, Ben Stokes, push the boundaries. Okay, that's good. All right, we've done that in 7 minutes 50. So we can get on and uh, talk to Nahal. And I know Nahal's got some good questions coming forward to me. Okay, can we get young Nahal on? Now, Nahal is coming from Bangalore, and he doesn't go for RCB. He goes for the Mumbai Indians. Why do you go for the Mumbai Indians, Nahal? Uh, Because of uh, Sachin Tendulkar. I (laughs) admire him a lot since small. Now, even after he retired, he's still the mentor. So... I will always support Mumbai Indians. Even if, even in other leagues, when they take over a franchise like in SA20, there also I support their team, like MI Cape Town. So, yeah. Sachin Tendulkar, look, he's the easiest wicket I've ever got, okay? Simple. <laughs> easiest wicket I've ever got. I can't believe that you support him. No, 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 seriously, he's one of the greats uh, going around. I only got him out once. I got him to autograph that particular photo, and uh, a lot of people know that. And he said, well, bold hoggy, this will never happen again. And it yes. didn't. But Sachin, there's some over uh, overage competitions going on at the moment. And I know that you're playing, but I'm going to line you up when I'm fit and uh, try and uh, ruin that little autograph that you gave me and get you out a second time. Hopefully he's, uh, hopefully he's blind by that time because that's the best chance that I've got of getting him out. But Nahal, you've got some questions for me, so let's nail me right now. What's your first question? In fact, so my first question is, as you have seen up to third test, Johnny Bairstow's form isn't up to the mark. So do you think uh, Daniel Lawrence should be given a chance? Like if you see, Bairstow is more experienced and has come up in crucial stages. So I actually I've seen I've seen uh, Brendan McCullum has backed Besto in his uh, interview. But then what do you think will happen in fourth test? Do you think Lawrence should be given a chance or 
go with Bairstow and wait, wait for him to come up? Uh, for me, I think that um, I think they, they should give Lawrence a crack now. Watching Bearstow and his footwork, the way that he got out LBW against Cool Deep Yard of the other day, that was um, that was not Bearstow at his best. I was going to use another term, but I'm trying to be friendly with uh, with Bearstow. I really love what he's done for cricket over the years. He's had a really good career, but um, at the moment, he's just out of his depth. He's not in a uh, good touch. And uh, even in the field, he's had a broken leg. And the way that he's running around, you can just see that it's still affecting him. He's not as quick as he used to be. And I think uh, Lawrence probably offers a lot more in the field as well. And Lawrence can bowl a bit of off spin as well. So uh, he, he can help out there with, with the depth in the bowling department. And you want to play that aggressive game. You've got a youngster um, that wants to take the game on. This is the perfect opportunity to get Dan perfect. Lawrence in there. So, uh, yep, no, perfect question there. Perfect question. What's your next question, please, Nahal? Uh, Next question is, uh, like for a test captain, which quality is more important for him to be tactical or aggressive? I'm going to ask you, what do you think? Like if you compare compare, uh, Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma, both like... Uh, Virat Kohli was aggressive captain and he has been great in test as a captain. He has achieved a lot for India. And even Rohit Sharma has... Uh, Rohit Sharma is more tactical of an aggressive. So if you see, I feel it should be mixed. Yep. But then which quality needs more? Like, uh, captain uh, for- more. Yeah, it actually, as as you're talking there, I'm, I'm sort of uh, challenging myself out at the present moment because on one hand, I really want a good tactical captain. And uh, I think if I look at someone like a Michael Clark or a Mark Taylor and even Ricky Ponting, they were very, very good tactically. But then you go to Steve Waugh uh, sort of on, on uh, our front. He was probably more aggressive to the opposition. So... Um, for me, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but I'll probably p- prefer a more aggressive captain because as a bowler, I should know what I'm doing tactically. So when a captain comes in and when he's going to be most effective, he's leading the team out in the field. When it comes to the batting side of it, he's just concentrating on his batting. He's not worried about the tactics too much unless it's a one-day game and you might have to change the batting order up. But out on the field, you want your you want your captain to be a little more aggressive, and when he's aggressive, he can come up and challenge your tactics and try and get something more out of you as a bowler. So, for me, I, I, I'm I'm leaning towards a more aggressive captain rather than a tactical captain, because bowlers should have their plans ready for the opposition team, and bowlers yeah, should be it. also adaptable when things aren't going right they should be able to adjust on the spot as well. So really the captain's there to be aggressive, to challenge the bowler uh, with his thought process at certain moments of the game, but also to make sure that the bowler is in a mental state where he's going to perform at his best. Um, So for me, a more aggressive captain. Would you agree with uh, what I've just said? Very good answer, sir. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now you've got a you've got another question there for me before we go yes. on to uh, some of these other questions. Okay. So my last question is like considering the lineup which India played in Rajkot, like same lineup, like no inclusion of uh, uh, Virat Kohli or Shreya Sayer. If you take this same lineup to the T20 World Cup, how far will this team India go in this World Cup? Like will they win or at least finals or semis? Like same lineup. Of you have to look. Yeah, um, when you when you're looking at the team, bowling side of it, I, I'd like Axel yeah. Patel to be in there. But you also got to have um, Shami in there as the extra quick. Um, and yeah, it's it's. Uh, you'd have Cool Deep, um, Hardik Pandya in there as a, as an all rounder as well because you want that you want that lower order batsman to be able to uh, offer you something different. Patel and Jadeja would be between those two as well to add you, uh, add the depth down the bottom order. 
Um, but for me, just looking out the way that T20 game is being played right now, uh, it's about boundary hitting. We just saw Australia versus New Zealand the other day, but and yeah. Australia, yeah, Australia have been taken to the cleaners with the ball and um, four to, four games in a row where they've been hit for 200 runs in those four games. But then they've chased those runs down in three of those games. So for me, it's um, you, you've got to have more aggressive, aggressive batting. So if Verrett Cole yeah. is going to be in your team, I feel as though he's got to open the batting with Rohit Sharma. And... Yeah, the the more I'm looking at the the more I'm looking at the lineup now, I I'm starting to think with the way that the game's evolving, either those two batsmen, Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli, have to be more aggressive with the bat and fo- try and find more boundaries, or um, yeah, you 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 might have to go for the younger generation because Jazwell the other day, yeah, yeah. Jazwell the other that. day, yeah, he was absolutely sensational. And uh, Safra's car, my godfather. Yeah, it was yeah. Good, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about. I'm a little bit worried about him against the pace stuff, um, yes. but he was sensational the other day, and I, I think he's got a long future for um, for uh, for India. Actually, I'm, I'm just going to lead into that. Um, so for me, for me, you're going to have to change your bowling lineup. You've got to get Hardik Pandya in there. Um, what is- Instead of Hardik Pandey, anyone from the bench, like, yeah, I, I agree because there was only four bowlers played in the test. We need at least five, yeah. minimum five. Look, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. include uh, Aksar Patel, as you told, or Washington Sundar, Sundar also. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, no, you, 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 you're on the money there. But when you go over the West Indies, I'd, I'd probably take, uh, I'd probably take uh, more all-round spin than all-round quicks. So Hardik Pandya will be going over there, but Hardik Pandya won't be guaranteed a game um, because they might might go with the Washington Sundar or Axa Patel and Jadeja um, uh, to to add to the batting depth, but also give you more bowling uh, or more spin depth as well. Because if you look at the wickets in the West Indies, they're starting to turn a lot more than be uh, rather than be pace friendly. So. That that could be something that you look at as well, but uh, yeah, Hardik Pandey will definitely be over there. But you need that you need those all rounders out the back end, and your top four batters have to do the majority of the job. Um, you've also got KL Rahul in there as well as as the keeper. Uh, I don't think Part's going to be right for this World Cup, even though he's come back and uh, trained out Bangalore there. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. and he wasn't keeping. So don't I I don't think Part will be available for for the World Cup. Um, but miracles do happen. Hopefully, he is. But then you've you've got KL Rahul, you've got Virat Kohli, and Rohit Sharma. I just think uh, if you've got three of them in your lineup, I just think I worry about your strike rate. So uh, all three of those batsmen have to have a big IPL, and they have to improve their strike rate. Good so, actually, going back to Safraz Khan, um, what do you think of him in the Test match? So he was really good. Like after like long time, he made his debut and to play with such confidence. Even after like if you see in the after in the first inning, see the, the way he got uh, run out, the way he became run out. It was very uh, like it was unusual. But still, he kept his momentum in the second innings. That is really great. And he didn't change his game plan. Like he yeah. kept on being aggressive. So like before, uh, like. Uh, one year back, we had Rishabh Pant to play that role. And since Rishabh Pant, we didn't uh, find any replacement up till now. So yep. after seeing his performance, I feel he's going to give us what Rishabh Pant had given us in test. He's very fearless. Uh, yep. Surfers. It was very nice to watch him play. And with players like that, we can actually score more runs in less overs. Like... Yeah, to counter basketball also. Yep, yep. No, I, I think it's I think I think it's uh, just a, a great acquisition to the uh, acquisition to the um, to the team, and I, I think he's got a really big future. Now, on go, on going yes. back to uh, on, on just quickly going to go back to that third test match because England did something special in the first test match of this series. 
They won from a uh, position where they were behind after the first innings. And it's very rare in Test match cricket that that actually happens. So if you go uh, back before the World Test Championship, winning uh, after having a deficit it happened 11% of the time. Um, but now, since the World Test Championship, it's happening 25% of the time. But all, also winning with having an advantage after the first innings. Back before the World Test Championship, it was 58% of the time, and now it's 75% of the time. So World Test Championship has turned the dynamic of Test Match Cricket around and had teams uh, be, uh, becoming more aggressive and wanting to win. So if you go back to the third test match, Joe Root not taking the catch of Rohit Sharma in that first uh, first innings in the 13th over when you, India were three down, that was costly because Three. India could bat. Yeah, very costly because it was just the amount of overs that India bat and they batted into day two, so they didn't have to bat it, uh, too much at the back end of the day if it's uh, a test match, if it started a turn. But also it didn't have uh, – it prevented Safaris Khan coming out when India were four down for around about 30 under extreme pressure with wood still fresh. So Safaris Khan was very lucky there. He took his opportunity and well, well done to him. And uh, I think I think uh, India can thank Joe Root and Safaris Khan can thank Joe Root for not taking that catch. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. What do you think of those yeah, stats? Actually, yeah, yeah. It's about those stats, like regarding yeah. World Test Championship. It, yeah, one yeah. thing I'll make it, like one thing is sure that uh, this World Test Championship has brought more intensity in the series. Suppose if it's a three-match series and if a team wins the series in the second match itself, they can't simply, uh, like, that's their main team for the third test. They have to th see the table also. Like, one lose can also cause them in the table, not in the series. So, it is interesting to even watch the last match also. Or else people wouldn't wa watch it because the series is already done. But then you have to focus on the table also, right? So. This this uh, championship has brought a great change in the uh, intensity of test matches. So that is my point. It. Yep. Now there there was a point about, there that yeah go on keep going. Yeah, like uh, uh, now this is regarding uh, Sarfraz Khan. Like actually, uh, like how we said, Rohit Sharma played a really great part for his uh, uh, time to get in the crease. Like if it was 30 for four, we can't assume like he wouldn't uh, score that well. But then he it was his first test match. He would be under great pressure. But then Rohit Sharma played a brilliant captain's innings to get him into the crease at a, a very easier spot. But then he didn't uh, let him down. He didn't let the team down. He went on yeah. doing. So, yeah. No, it was, it was uh, you know, you, you never know what would it would have happened if uh, India were four down for thirty and Safaris Kane came out. He could have he could have uh, debuted with a double hundred under his belt, but it was just that extra yeah, pressure that would have been uh, would have been on him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the good yes. thing about uh, Safaris is his brother did so well in the under 19s He's got yeah, an opportunity to should, play yeah. for Mumbai this week. Brilliant stuff. I'm liking yeah. that. I'm absolutely yeah, yeah. loving that. Yeah, yeah. He, anyway, we've got some. Uh, we've got, yeah, he's going to be very good. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've got some yeah. questions over here on the right side, and I want to take one from Atal Baral. Uh, Atal, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, Atal Baral. He's been very good uh, follower of mine. I haven't seen him on the last two lives, but it's good to see you back, Atal. Well done. Why has Joe Root file, uh, failed to pile on the runs in this series? I think uh, that's a very good question, Atal. Um, look, Joe Root's playing that aggressive brand of cricket. He's trying to get the runs to flow. He's got out with a couple of reverse sweeps or uh, reverse ramps to fast bowlers. The one in the last test match, that was a great catch, I think, by Jay's well out second slip. That was a beauty, yes, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. But you've yeah, got to remember... Yes, yeah, yeah. He it held on to that with his Oh, it was it was a crucial catch. So um you, you've got to remember that Joe Root has scored a lot of runs from that particular shot. 
And now that he's got out, I think twice now uh, in recent times, yeah, yeah. It, people are people are questioning it. But I don't think they. Sh- I don't think you should question it. Whatever's in his mind, and he can execute it. He's trained it. Let him keep playing it. Uh, for me, if he starts averaging around twenty with that particular shot or less, and he's getting out uh, regularly with it, where it's not giving him. Uh, great value for the shot that's when you put it away for a while but for me he's got to keep playing it because that's an option where he can put pressure on opposition bowlers it's a good question there Atal. what do you think about joe root's play at the moment now like okay i have this opinion like uh joe root with this aggressive batting i feel he should play that way in england pitch like because he knows those pitches but when he comes to foreign pitches like is he should like first innings he should preferably play like the normal test cricket because they're playing such risk shots in a pitch where he's not well known about it it can mm-hmm. cost him but then as you said like this shot he has scored a lot of runs even ben duckett said in an interview like people weren't complaining when he was hitting uh, reverse uh, reverse sweep for pat cummins for sixes but now when he's yeah. becoming out they are complaining so that's yep, also yep. there but then but then like if you see like uh, or else he should not try it at the start of the innings he should play it at least like 70 balls then when he's very settled then when he knows the pitch well that time he should try playing the shots very early it is it is uh, <laughs> not good i think so i i can more long. yeah i can agree with you but that that seems like a no old, old mindset now um I, i if i go back to that third test match India got 400 plus on the board. England yeah yeah. Uh England had to try and get those runs as quickly as possible to try and avoid batting in in conditions what they did on day 4 uh where they got bowled out for about 122 I think it was or around that, around that total. So you you want to try and avoid being put in those conditions where it's going to be toughest where you're going to struggle to uh to get that, that, that the um the score on the board when you're chasing in the final innings so for me i thought i i feel as though england their approach in that second innings was perfect they just yeah. fell apart out the back end uh they were set up beautifully by duckett but you had to be tr- you had to try and get as quickly in front of india as possible and try and get a lead of about 50 out least and uh that's what they were trying to do and it didn't come off and um yeah you you play by the sword you die by the sword so uh that that's the way england goes have we got another question there please ak ravine how are you going good to see you again hi hoggy do you think england has underestimated the uh inexperienced indian team i don't, i don't think they have i i really don't think they have um i just think they're going out playing their brand of cricket they know that indian uh, the indian youth have got such good talent uh, they've got such good depth um for me as as we're just talking about in the in the previous question there england are going out there trying to brand, play a brand of cricket where they're getting as many runs on the board as quickly as possible so that they don't have to do as much work in the second innings but also giving their bowlers as much opportunity to get 20 wickets as they possibly can as well um and all of a sudden uh that they've been sort of um hampered by the approach of jaswell the way that jaswell's playing that aggressive brand of cricket especially in the second innings and safraz khan i'll put him in there as well all of a sudden is putting pressure back on the england bowlers and i think the england bowlers um uh, with their inexperience just can't handle the pressure at the present moment and i think that's where the difference of the uh, of the uh, two teams is what do you think nahar uh i i don't think like they and yeah as you say i don't think they underestimated the ex- experienced indian team but then uh like you see uh they have they have come prepared with the going with spin options yeah they they for them loss of jack lynch was very huge because he's a only experienced spinner the the remaining are like not experienced so but then they are also performing really good yeah so it's so at uh, and 
they, they, I don't think they underestimated the team because the even some dismissals, if you have seen, like how like uh, how Ben Stoke was dis- dismissed by Bumrah. That was a very really good ball. Like he was playing his own innings, but uh, India's excellence has outclassed them at some point. So that's Aj- what it's none of them took uh, underestimated. Yeah. It d- definitely has. And uh, I'm looking back. I don't think Wood opened the bowling in the second innings. I think it was Anderson and Root. And um, to jazz well, you have to have Wood uh, operating out the left-hander with that sheer pace with the new ball. You don't let Jaswell uh, get away with it and have Wood come later on in the innings where he's already set. So for me... Uh, there was a bit of a tactical boo-boo there. If I've got that wrong, please, someone get on there and uh, make a comment. But I'm pretty sure it was Anderson and Root that uh, opened the bowling because Anderson's got to use that new ball to swing the ball. They they should have had wood. Uh, next question, please, AK. Atta Burrell again. Uh, how good has Jaswell been in this series? Is he the best youngster going around in world cricket at present? Ah, what do you think, Nahal? He's been excellent. So, like, especially his attitude, like, towards the game. Like, I've seen in his, uh, some interviews, the way he speaks, the way he speaks, in that only we can understand how, how badly he wants to be in the top of the batting. Like, how badly he wants to be the best batsman and he can every shot he plays you can see the hunger for the runs he was been terrific superb even like uh, he actually yep. if you see his test debut also he had scored 170 runs against uh, west indies in that too in an away soil it's not like easy so and now he's yeah. keeping up his uh, batting this thing so it was excellent by jason i have i'm keeping yeah. high hopes on him like for a upcoming future <laughs> India is in the same hands. A lot of, yeah, a lot of people are keeping high hopes up for him. And uh, I tell, I, I agree with you. I think he's the most exciting youngster going around uh, in world cricket at the moment. Safraz Khan could knock him off uh, the perch there in the next Test match because he's exciting as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at, yeah, I'm just looking at Jaswell now. And I was looking at some stats there, and he hasn't faced that many balls from the pace of Wood. And when he goes away, and I said this in the last vlog as well, this is that's going to be the big test for him when he comes to Australia, when he goes to England, and also South Africa, because there's going to be extra pace there, and he can't afford, especially uh, in uh, England and Australia, you can't afford early on against the new ball to be playing outside off stump away from your body. And I think that could be his downfall. But the way that he's going about it, what I've heard with him talking in the media, as you just said there, Nahal, I think he'll go there fully prepared and he'll work on that part of his technique to make sure he gives his, uh, himself the best chance to be able to perform in those uh, foreign conditions. So I've got high hopes for him. But that's going to be his big test when he's away off soil. And uh, yes. I, I think there's going to be some big things there. Have we got another question there, uh, Rahal? I mean, okay. Uh, Roland, John, uh, Roland John Fernandez. Fernandez. Uh, yeah, I, that's got to be a Sri Lankan name, I, I would have thought. Fernandez? Um, or could Sorry. be down south in Chennai? Jaswell's sixes against Jimmy Anderson were exceptional. Do you think it's the T20 leagues that have brought about the attacking nature or was it just playing according to the situation? Roland, I think it's a bit of both. And I think the T20 game is just uh, starting to change the test game slightly. And I think this more, uh, more aggressive approach at test level is exciting. And I'll go back. I remember watching England play Australia out the Wacker when I was about 10 years old. And I was watching Tavare, I think, bat the whole day for about 18 runs. Probably he might have got 60, but it felt like he only got 18 runs in that whole day. I remember getting in the car, going back for a two and a half hour trip with dad back to the farm. And I said, Dad, 
if I ever play test cricket for Australia, I'm definitely not going to be batting like that because that was boring and uh, there was no excitement there. And test cricket needs more aggression and batsmen to take on the bowlers rather than just trying to defend all day. There are times where you've got to defend uh, and try and save a test match at the back end, yes. But that's excitement plus because you're, you're, you're hanging in there, you're hanging in there. And the bowling team have to get that final wicket before the end of the fifth day's play is finished. So th there's excitement there. But on day one, you can't have that. So uh, I, I think it's because of T20 cricket and because of the situation uh, that Jaswell took on on Jimmy Anderson. Uh, what do you think, Nahal? Yeah, I agree with you. Like the aggressive approach they get is, especially is from the T20 cricket. Like when you see Jaiswal also in the starting overs, at times he just starts to like hit boundaries, four also. Like those things comes like how you play in power play in a T20 cricket. So yeah, and situation also when if the score is going slow and if the momentum is decreasing, so he would want to keep it up. So yeah. It's a mixture. Like how it is, it, it, yeah, it is a mixture, and you're you're right there with the power play. I think when you when you look at the um, when you look at uh, the start of a test match, generally you have three slips and a gully in play. You might have a point, you might have a mid off, but there's a bit there. Also, bowler, especially the right arm bowler to Jaswell, is trying to bowl or swing the ball in and get him LBW. So if you look at the way Steve Smith faces uh, faces right arm bowling and left arm bowling, he gets across on off stump. So Jaswell uh, might look at that approach when he comes over here to Australia to get on uh, on off stump. If the bowler bowls out the stumps, then he can access the leg side where they generally have three players, and that's a mid on, a short catching mid wicket who's under the bat, and a deep fine leg. So there's plenty of space out there to access just to use timing off that good length. And he and he's tall as well. He's got some height, and he can use that uh, little bit of height to hit through those areas. And I, th that's where I think Jaswell is really going to dominate here in Australia. And I'm going to be looking forward to seeing how he changes his technique to adjust here. It's brilliant. Uh, next question there, please, AK. Uh, Ravine, how are you going again? Dur of Jerul uh, and his wicket keeping. The Ducket run out. The Ducket run out. Um, oh, gee whiz, the Ducket run out. There were a few. I'm thinking about the um, Safra's Khan run out. I was just disappointed with that. Jadeja just going, oh, no, I'm on 99. I'm on 99. I need my single. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, sorry, youngster. <laughs> You're going to have to come back another day to get your 100, uh, your first 100. Uh, but uh, the Duckett run out, that was a that was a similar nature, wasn't it? Um, who was batting with Duckett at the time? Um, was it Stokes? It was, uh, who was no, it? it was the first wicket. Duckett was uh, it was it for Crawley only. Most probably Crawley. Crawley. Yeah, yeah that right. was the first wicket. Yes. Oh, was that in the second innings? Are we talking about the second innings here? Yeah, second innings. Second innings. Second yeah, yeah, innings. second yeah. innings. Yeah, yeah. Second no, innings. that was. Yeah, yeah. No, that's just that's just poor batting, poor batting, and uh, it's probably Craw Crawley's fault there. Um, and at the end of the day, if you call yes, you can't leave your your partner stranded. You've got to go because you've called yes. Yeah, it's as true. simple as that. Yeah. The only time you turn your uh, the the batsman around, uh, back is if you're in a T20 game. Um, and you're the one that, that's the big hitter. The batsman out the other end is not, and there's only a couple of overs to go. That's the only way that you'll leave the partner stranded. Uh, Jural, I am very impressed with him, both with the bat and with the gloves. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I feel sorry for Barat, but I think Jural uh, offers more. Uh, behind the stumps and with the bat. So I think that's a good selection and I think he's going to have a very good career for India. Uh, depends on Pant wh whether he uh, gets fully fit to be able to come back and play all three formats. But I think what I've seen from Jarul in the first uh, his first test match, um, I, I'm very impressed and I think he's got a, he's got a big future. What do you think, Nora? 
Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Like especially in the turning pitches, like if you have seen Fuchs in this tournament, he was excellent keeper. Even Chase Bharat as keeper, he was really good. Yeah, his yeah, reflexes yeah. and all. Because when it turns, you have to be very aware. You have to be very quick. So yeah. Bharat's keeping was very good, but then his he couldn't uh, keep up his uh, level of batting. Like his batting wasn't up to the mark. So they had to change it for that. And Drew Jural has. Uh, been very good like he has kept that uh, keeping style he has been he has his takes are also were very good and yeah and the batting also like he the way he batted it felt like india has a number 5 batsman like who yeah. if the score uh, team is collapsing who can get score in the back end of the match back end of the innings so yeah his batting has uh, given us a little hope like yeah so yep, yep. batting was also brilliant from that to he's a t20 player in ipl also he was very good he has a strike rate i guess about 160 150 around in that range so he is a yep, very yep. aggressive batsman also and in test match he played like a test batsman so yep. he's a all rounder player in the batting wise also and yeah his keeping also like was very good his takes and especially even that run out also he was very quick so he didn't miss yep. the opportunity. Usually in test matches, you get very less opportunity. Opportunity. So when you get that, you have to take it. You have to not miss it. So yep. yeah, he has done a great job. He, he's done a he's done a great job. Yeah, and uh, don't be surprised uh, if he has a good IPL or a good start to the IPL. I don't know when they've got to have their squads named for the T Twenty World Cup this year, but if he gets off to a good start in the IPL this year. He could knock a player or two out of that T20 team. So watch out for Jarul yeah. uh, coming up yeah, out the yeah. back end. Good question there, Ravine. Uh, have we got one more there, please, AK? Uh, AK, do you think India will continue to dominate in the coming coming match or will England come back stronger? Nahal, I'm going to let you answer that one first. Okay, so... Uh, as Gumra is rested, now England will look for that, uh, will take advantage of that, will try to take advantage of that because now, uh, yeah, there are Siraj and all, but then when when it was, uh, when uh, India were desperate for wickets, it was Gumra usually, we used to provide, not like in third test, uh, yeah, it was Siraj, but then otherwise, so, and Gumra is really unpredictable, so Gumra being rested is an advantage for England. So they yeah. will go with more intent this time to come back. Yeah, and uh, India has to uh, like has to keep the momentum. They have to not think that uh, Bumrah is rested. They have to keep going, keep doing the same thing what they have been doing, how they have been performing. And I feel the substitution bowler has a very crucial role mm-hmm. to uh, replace Bumrah. Whether if it's a spinner or a fast bowler, uh, it depends upon the pitch, like uh, what they're going to, how they're going to make it. So he has a crucial role for, so yeah, and uh, England also yep. will look on to take advantage of, uh, so it is, uh, I feel uh, uh, it is a 50-50 call for now. If Bumbra was there, I would back India, <laughs> but now it's Well, exactly 50-50. right. Yeah, well, the other thing is England are going to make a few changes as well. I think they're going to rest Wood and Anderson and bring in Robinson uh, and go okay. for the extra spinner. So, yeah, and I think that's going to play into India's favour. Um, but Siraj, if they go with Mukesh uh, with, the, with the extra pace, I don't think he's going to trouble the England batsman. I think that will play into England's aggressive style. And I... I think that England can really uh, take advantage there. And I think it's going to be a close game like we saw in Hyderabad. I think whoever wins the toss, obviously, is going to get the advantage uh, to bat first. But I don't think it's going to play as big a part in this test match as in the previous test match. So I think we're going to see something like Hyderabad happen again. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a really close test match simply because we haven't uh, – well, both teams are missing their high-quality front-end bowlers in the pace department. 
So that's the way I think that will go. Now, AK, uh, have we got one more question or is that it? This is the last question. Uh, ah, there you go. Merlin. Do you know Merlin there, Nahal? <laughs> How are you going there, Merlin? Now, Merlin, uh, we're going to have to get going. Nahal, thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's cook and taste. Very good, Nahal. Keep it up, mate. Thank you very much for joining me, Nahal. And hopefully the Mumbai yes, Indians sir, have a great, great season this year. Uh, I spent a bit of time with Mumbai Indians last year uh, coaching their second team just before the IPL happened. Very good outfit, very professional. And Hardik Pandya, captain of the team, uh, I think it's going to be a good move. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good move because it takes the pressure off Rohit Sharma because he's under so much stress. Yeah, he's he's under so, so much stress. He can go out and play. What do you think, Hardik Pandya, a better captain than Rohit Sharma for the Mumbai Indians? Uh, Hardik Pandya has proven as a captain in Gujarat Titan. He's a good captain. Yeah. But then it was so sudden that they changed uh, Rohit Sharma, like who was a five times winner. He has brought yeah. up it. It was a. It, I felt sad when I heard that. I <laughs> when I heard Hardik Pandya was joining Mumbai, I was happy. It's like I like him as a player. But then when they announced that. Because Rohit Sharma, I feel he deserved a bit better, like the send off and stuff, because for what he has done. But then, yeah, I yeah. am keeping hopes on Hardik Pandya to lead the team. He ha- he has that w- great uh, leadership qualities, and he's very active throughout the game. I have, we have seen in, uh, uh, in for Gujarat Titans, he was at he has taken them to finals in back to back seasons. He was he, he never gives up. So that attitude as a captain is very good in uh, Hardik Pandya. So, mm. yeah, it is uh, very interesting this time. Well, Rohit, Rohit Sharma has won five titles. Brilliant. Hey, He's captain of India in all three formats. Hardik okay. Pandya is taking on one of the biggest roles in yeah. IPL cricket. He's got to make sure that he doesn't go soft. Yes. Did you get the joke? You get the joke? All right, that was a poor joke. <laughs> All right then, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Good luck to the test match. Uh, to, good luck to both teams on the weekend uh, coming up in the next test match in Australia and New Zealand. I think Australia are going to win that T20 series 3-zip. you agree with me, Nahal, before we go? Uh, that is a good one. But, yeah, and... Uh... Like they're missing, uh, I feel uh, New Zealand is missing Williamson's captaincy. So I could go with yours. Uh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Please Nahal. Now, thanks again for joining me, Nahal. Thanks again for everyone yes. for joining me on Hog Out. And uh, we're having so much fun here. And we'll catch you after the next test match or another chat live. And who's going to be the guest then? Thanks, guys. <laughs>